Welcome everyone. We have a different environment for you here today on Cola Vida Cooking Live. So thank you for joining me in my backyard with my grill. You guys all voted for learning how to make pizza on the grill. And so that is what I'm going to show you here today. So a little more intro and then I will do some explaining because I have a lot of explaining and you guys might have questions. So first of all, we are here every Tuesday and Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern time on Cola Vida USA on Facebook and on Instagram and we're cooking what you vote for. So I make what you guys want me to. So we are running polls on Instagram and Facebook and for example today you guys voted for pizza on the grill and pizza I'm so excited because this is a very special dish for me pizza is probably my favorite thing to make um, I've made it in wood-fired ovens and regular ovens and skillets on grills all different ways with all different kinds of dough and so I'm really excited to bring you this pizza on the grill tutorial. So what I'm gonna do, I want to explain because once this gets going, it goes pretty quickly. So I won't be able to talk too much while I'm doing it. So I want to explain how it's all gonna roll out. First of all, we're doing two pizzas. The first is a spicy and sweet salami pizza with olives. And the second is a bruschetta pizza with crushed tomatoes, arugula, garlic, and Parmesan. So I'm going to take you through all those ingredients. Next, however, and just as important, maybe more important, is the equipment that I'm going to use. So I have a basic baking sheet here, inverted, you will know, face down. I have some very handle, handy metal implements. Very important that these things can't melt because this is going to get very hot. So I have a spatula and some tongs. I also have this little dough scraper to help me get my dough off the cookie sheet. That's very important for me. I have some cutting boards to put my pizza on when I'm finished. So when I cook on the grill, the first thing is I heat it up really hot. So 500 plus degrees and it's getting there. It's at about 500 right now. You want it as hot as you can go. I don't use a pizza stone and I put the dough directly on the grill grate. So there are a few things you need to do to make that happen easily. Key to this is the cookie sheet and the star of the show really is the Cola Vita olive oil. This is our premium Italian. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sprinkle some or drizzle I guess you don't sprinkle olive oil, do you? You drizzle olive oil onto the baking sheet and get it nice and oiled up. So Arlene says, uh, this will be fun from Ontario. Ah, Arlene from Ontario, I know you have joined us before, so thank you for joining us again. I recognize that name. Mary Eileen, uh, Sussex County, New Jersey. Nice. Welcome, Mary Eileen, and thank you for your recipe from last time. We enjoyed it so much for dinner. Okay, so I'm going to scoop one of my little rounds of dough off from the cookie sheet. Now, a word about shaping your dough when you do it on the grill. I don't worry too much about getting it round. Personally, on the grill, I might like a nice rectangular shape and I allow for some irregularities because when you flop it over, as I'll demonstrate, to get it onto the grill, things happen. It's okay. It's delicious anyway. So I press this out onto the oiled sheet like so. And I get it into a shape that closely approximates what I like. Now, what I'm going to do, you can see it's nice and loose. It's not sticking to the sheet because I oiled it. So that's going to be really important. Okay, now I'm going to put the olive oil on the top part too. And this is important because I need it oiled on the bottom so it won't stick to the baking sheet. And I need it oiled on the top because that's the part that I'm going to flip onto the grill grate, as you'll see. So 
I follow the rule when I'm grilling anything, including pizza, that I oil the food and not the grate. That is my practice and it has worked for me in the past. So we'll see if it works today. Haha. <laughs> okay. So that is good. I have oil on top, oil on bottom, pizza dough on deck. Okay. So that's it for my oil. Now for this one, I am going to start with the easier one to warm up. So we're going to do crushed tomatoes as a base. I have Cola Vita crushed tomatoes. And because this is a bruschetta pizza, I'm looking for those pieces of tomato. You could use whole fresh tomatoes, but I'm doing the crushed. And then I'm going to put in, I have shaved garlic here that I'm just going to sprinkle on top. Those two things, plus some salt and pepper, are what I'm going to put on this dough round and then bake it. So the first step is that I load this onto the grill. We are at temperature now. It's very exciting. And the sun is coming out. It's nice to be outside, isn't it? Okay. I'm going to get this onto the grill. I'm going to close the lid and then I'm going to cook it for two minutes. My assistant is going to have to tell me when two minutes are up. <laughs> All right. Are you ready? Okay. Here we go. I'm going to try to stand to the side so you can see this happen. Okay. Up goes the grill. Very hot. You might have to help it down. Voila. Close it. Two minutes. While we have our two minutes, we can chat a bit. So the whole reason you want to do that is because this grill is very, very hot, hotter than your oven gets, right? So I don't really want to leave it on one side or the other for too long because it's going to burn that pizza. But if I cook it quickly on one side and quickly on the other, you're going to have a nice crispy outer crust of that pizza and the inside is going to be super moist and airy and delicious. This is really one of my favorite ways to make pizza outside a wood burning oven. Um, it really traps the moisture in the pizza dough and I think it's a fantastic way to get close to wood fired oven pizza at home if you have a grill. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these things next to me because I need to have all of my implements ready because things are gonna move fast. Once I open that up, spoon in the tomatoes, I'm going to use my metal implements to flip it over. And then I'm gonna to top everything pretty much as quickly and efficiently as possible. Try not to get crazy. You know, we want to be safe. We don't want to burn ourselves, <laughs> that kind of stuff. How are we on two minutes? Almost. Almost. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to flip it over, then top it, and then I'm going to close the lid and bake it for another two minutes. Also, I don't want to keep the lid open for too long because that lets a lot of the hot air escape, much like when I talk. So. <laughs> Now, hopefully what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide my metal spatula two under minutes. two minutes. Okay. We're going to slide the metal spatula underneath and we flip. Perfect. And then I'm going to take my tomatoes and I'm not going too heavy handed with these tomatoes, a light coating. And my garlic. Okay. Two minutes on the clock, please. Two minutes. Okay. Are you cooking over the heat the whole time? Yes, directly over the heat and it is on high. So keep in mind that when you approach this grill, it is going to be hot. And so if you want to wear oven mitts, you're welcome to. I have very heat resistant hands, so I don't need to, <laughs> but um, some people are more sensitive and so I would recommend that. It's, there's, it's always a good idea to have an oven mitt around. I have my cutting board ready. I'm going to shift this out of the way. I'm going to reuse and I have this guy ready to go. Now a word about the pizza dough. I have very strong opinions on pizza dough. I welcome you to ask me questions about pizza dough. 
This is dough that I've made. It's a sourdough. So, phone's ringing. Hello. <laughs> it's a pizza hotline. <laughs> Um, it's a sourdough, but store-bought dough works fantastic. Sometimes you can find it in your freezer or refrigerator section of your grocery store. That works great. Um, or you can uh, make your own dough. We have a few recipes on colavitarecipes.com for homemade pizza dough. So um, I encourage you to do that. How are we doing on two minutes? 30 seconds. 30 seconds, okay. <laughs> now I really feel like the two minute two minute time bracket on the top and then flip to the other is the perfect amount once you get your grill over 500 degrees. So my oven inside, you know, the other thing that this does is your pizza cooks a lot closer to an actual flame. And you know, inside that doesn't happen. And so when I cook my pizza indoors in the regular oven, I have to cook it for about eight to 10 minutes. And what that does is it does dry out the pizza dough quite a bit more. So this way doesn't. Have I talked 30 seconds worth? I get very yes. antsy. Yes. <laughs> yes, okay. Here we go. I take my cutting board over here. And then I'm going to carefully slide that onto the cutting board. Okay. Did you slice the garlic? I did. I thinly, thinly sliced it, and it's just perfect right now. We've got a little steam happening. What? What's up? Slice what? Slice the garlic. Yes. <laughs> and you can kind of push around your ingredients if you feel like they've, you know, escaped. So to finish this one... Somebody wants to know, where can they get flour? Oh, where can they get flour? That's a great question. So right now, I've actually had some luck at my local grocery store with getting flour. A word about flour for pizza dough, I use all-purpose flour, but what I prefer to use is the type 00 flour. It's a finer grind of flour, makes your pizza fluffier and lighter, so if you can find it, it comes in like these little bags. I really like that stuff, but all-purpose will do. I'm going to take my olive oil. I'm going to give it a little finishing drizzle and then I have shaved Parmesan that I'm going to put on top like this. This is a simple, healthy and delicious pizza. You've got salt from the Parmesan, you've got a little garlic, you've got olive oil, tangy tomatoes, a little bitterness from fresh arugula and I like to put this on after because I like a little salad on my pizza and the steam from the fresh cooked pizza is just going to release that bitter earthy aroma of the arugula. Now the finisher to this is a little Cola Vita balsamic glaze and I'm just going to drizzle this over the top. So pretty. Come on. Yeah. And that's just going to add a little sweetness because it is a glaze, so it's balsamic vinegar reduced to a syrup consistency, but it's also still really tangy, so it's kind of the perfect situation. And this is like the Italian flag right here. I mean, it's like red, white, and green. It's beautiful, it's fresh, it's done. Easy, right? We're gonna do it again with a slightly more complicated pizza. Okay, so actually, I invent pizza recipes. Um, it's one of my favorite things to do. And some of my pizza recipes are a little unconventional. I like to think outside the margarita uh, recipe box, although I love a good margarita. But I like to do something a little different. I'm gonna re-oil this just to make sure. Sticking is a bad thing, so we don't ever want it to stick. So for this pizza, what I did was I combined crushed tomatoes, which I'll use again, so I'm going to leave over there, mozzarella cheese, jalapenos for a little spice. It is Cinco de Mayo, everybody, so a little, a little spicy kick. Uh, green olives. Cola Vita makes uh, packages green olives and also in green olive pate. That's also really good, so I recommend either of those. I just chopped up the green olives really finely and some salami. Uh, you could use spicy or regular. 
And the finishing touch, and I know you're gonna think this is strange, is maple syrup. I know, it is so good. It's like a chocolate covered pretzel, sweet and spicy. You've got cured meat, you've got cheese. It's fantastic. So we're gonna make it happen. Okay, first thing is that I'm gonna go through the same process. So I oiled my tray and then I'm just gonna place my second pizza dough on it. It's really easy to stretch out when, you're, when your um, tray is oiled. Sorry, I had a mental block there. Okay. Perfect. Now these are personal size pizzas. So each of my little dough balls is about 280 to 300 grams and I can stretch that out to about 10 inches. And that's what I consider a personal size pizza. Is this hard salami? This is, no, it's not. It is not hard salami. You could use hard salami though, if you wanted to. Um, but I feel like with a hard salami, you might want to chop it into tinier pieces because it's, it's not as easy to bite when you like take a chunk off your pizza. Like, you know, it's a little bit more tough. Okay, so I've got top and bottom oiled. Now, I'm gonna put everything over here. So the key to this one is do not panic. There's a lot of stuff to put on this pizza <laughs> and you don't wanna panic. You wanna get it on there calmly and efficiently. So let's start by getting our dough on the grill. Same process, I'm gonna flip it over. So if you missed it the first time, you have a second chance to see it. Ooh, that one's gonna be almost round. Okay, two minutes on the clock, please. There we go. So you might have noticed that I just kind of peel the edge with my finger when I'm flipping it over. So it'll stick on there, but it's more like a suction rather than actual sticking. So it'll come off really easy. It's like peeling a sticker and then it just flops down gently onto the grill. Okay. I'm very excited for this one. What else can I tell you about pizza dough? Does anybody have any pizza questions? We are doing a giveaway in conjunction with this week because it's all pizza recipes. On Thursday, I'm gonna be showing you how to make pizza in a skillet, which I have to say, I really like that too. Different kind, different style. But in conjunction with um, this week, we're doing a giveaway. So if you head over to Cola Vita USA on Instagram, you'll see that we're giving away a copy of Zaza's Perfect Pie, which is actually a pizza book that I wrote um, about kid-friendly pizza recipes. And it also comes with Cola Vita olive oil, so you will be stocked and ready to go. So head over to Instagram, find that post, and enter the giveaway. Okay, how are we doing on two minutes? One minute. One minute left. Wow, it really felt like I talked for a long time. I didn't. <laughs> Let's see, what else can I tell you about? Um, Where do you my, get the double O flour? Double O flour you can usually find in the baking section of your grocery store. Um, I have been finding it lately, easily. Two minutes, okay. One, I will complete that thought oh, in a second. Bubbly. Woo, it's bubbly. Okay, we're gonna flip and pop. Okay, first crushed tomatoes. And this I'm gonna do even thinner than the bruschetta pizza. I just want a hint of tomato. Okay. Mozzarella cheese. Come on. I have a couple things to say about mozzarella cheese and pizza after this, after I finish my double O sauce. Jalapeno, as much as you want. I'm just going to do a sprinkle. I removed the veins and the seeds from these. The olives, and I like to put these in little clusters so they're not spread all around. Ooh, that's hot. And salami. Okay. One more. Okay. Give me a minute and 30 seconds because I took a long time to top. 
Okay, so double O flour. Um, you can find that usually in the bakery aisle of your local grocery store. Um, in the, you know, flour has been hard to find, but I have been finding that just because people usually don't buy it. They're not sure what to do with it. It usually comes in a smaller bag and it usually hangs out right near the all-purpose flour. So that is where I get it. Um, mozzarella cheese. I want to finish my thought there. So I actually had some leftover shredded mozzarella that I used for this. Um, I usually use fresh, fresh mozzarella that I tear, but keep in mind that fresh mozzarella has a lot of water in it. So you want to do your best to buy either um, low moisture mozzarella, or if you do buy the fresh, make sure to drain it for at least a half an hour to get all that extra water out because it's just gonna pool in the center and then you're gonna have a puddle in your pizza. Nobody wants a puddle in their pizza. Can you freeze the dough? So you can freeze dough that you make with active dry yeast. Um, often you can buy store-bought uh, dough that's been frozen. The recipe on colavitarecipes.com is, um, is for a dough with active dry yeast and you can absolutely freeze that. For my sourdough, I don't feel like that freezes so well, so I don't do that. I do Time refrigerate it for three days. Okay, cool. I'm gonna give it two more seconds. We're almost done. This pizza is gorgeous. I'm so excited. <laughs> so I took a little time off the baking because I took a lot of time to talk. Move my ingredients out of the way. You wanna make sure everything is close by so that you don't have to struggle too much because pizza should not be about struggling. Okay, here we go. Ah, that's so great. Okay, now I'm going to finish this. Okay, so this is our second pizza. I'm going to push them together so you can see them both. Can you see them both? Okay. And this is my maple syrup. This is a dark maple syrup. Um, and I want to be careful because I just want a little bit. And I'm doing this like the balsamic glaze. And just kind of, I like to get it in the salami especially because that is just like a really good flavor. It's like candied bacon. It's kind of like a candied bacon pizza, to be honest. So there you go. That is your maple syrup. You could also use honey. Um, that's the wrong top. <laughs> so you could do either of those things. So let's review our ingredients because that is it. It's such a quick and fantastic way to cook pizza. And the only complicated part is making sure you're prepared. So all of my stuff was in little bowls. I have a little extra. I've got spoons if I need them. I've got my tongs, all my equipment. And we have both of these recipes on colavitarecipes.com and they detail all the equipment that you'll need and give you instructions, especially for grilling. So you will have that to take with you. Um, so again, our bruschetta pizza, colavita diced tomatoes, shaved garlic, shaved Parmesan, arugula, and balsamic glaze, and of course, olive oil. Our, we'll call it our sweet and spicy olive and salami pizza, has colavita crushed tomatoes, mozzarella cheese, um, chopped green olives or colavita's olive pate, jalapenos, salami, and a wee little bit of maple syrup or honey. That is the whole show. And this is dinner tonight, which I'm really excited about. <laughs> I love this pizza, especially. So any other pizza questions before I close? Your last tip remaining is to remember to turn off the grill. You'd be surprised how many people and how many times I've forgotten and to turn off the propane underneath. <laughs> so those are the tips I have for you for grilled pizza. Again, remember oil both sides of the pan or both oil that bottom of the pan and both sides of the pizza dough, flip it onto the grill 
cook for two minutes with the lid closed, flip it over, top, and then cook it for another two minutes, and then put it on a cutting board. That is it. Mystery solved. And plus you get these beautiful little lines on your pizza. It's great. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining me here. Um, again, if you need a refresher on the recipes, they will be up on colavita.com. Also, please sign up for our newsletter. <laughs> please sign up for our newsletter on colavita.com so you can get updates, you can get the recap, you can cook along with us next time. And um, also, don't forget to head over to Colavita USA on Instagram so you can take part in the cookbook and olive oil giveaway. We're very excited about that. And I will see you back here at 3 p.m. on what day is it? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> 3 p.m. on Thursday to cover how to make pizza in a cast iron skillet. And for that, we're gonna have a completely new environment, which is gonna be really exciting. So I'm changing up the scene on you guys all the time. If you have any extra comments, please leave them in the comments on Facebook and I will get back to them as soon as I can if I didn't get to them while we were broadcasting. Thanks again, guys. Happy pizza making. <laughs>